Well, it looks like Ronel Blanco put the O in Blanco. After the leadoff home run to Quincy Hamilton, he struck out 10 batters. And Bregman went deep. This lineup is ready to slaughter the New York Yankees. That's right. They're coming to town. And they are picked by some people to not even make the playoffs. Let's talk about what's coming up. Opening day on Thursday on this edition of Locked on Astros. Yainel Diaz, this is Locked on Astros. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at, X, at uh, Eric Coxtros. You can find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Thank you for, for, for listening to us every day, becoming part of our Ast- Locked On Astros family. Go ahead and subscribe to us. Make this uh, your daily listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Go ahead and check us out. But uh, Brett, where can you find you at? They can find me at H-Town Wheelhouse on X, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stros411 on X, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive. Positive, I'm feeling the opening day vibes. Always Stros. Yes, guys, thank you for making us first listen. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. And I know opening day is just, uh, thank you for taking that off. I couldn't focus with that on. But uh, guys, opening day, Thursday, are you going, are you ready to see the Astros take on the Yankees? If you're not ready, go get your tickets. Tickets are, tickets could be uh, pricey. It didn't matter if you you got it from the Astros because of dynamic pricing or if you got it on the secondhand market. It's going to be Costly, not only because it's opening day, but because it's the New York Yankees. So uh, yeah. thank you for that. So, um, Brett, uh, you got to go to game yesterday. You got to have a, a lot of awesome experiences. I know the Astros got beat by the face Cowboys. Everybody thinks that the sky is falling, but are you that worried? I'm not. No, not at all. These are exhibition games. It is your AAA team. Yeah, you know, you should beat the brakes off of a minor league team, but – when it's all said and done, you, you're not as locked in and, and loaded and ready to go. I don't know. Like Bregman might make an argument for that. Bregman, 385, three home runs on the spring, looked really, really good at the plate. Um, shoot, J.C. Correa hit a home run today, the game I went to. Um, it was a pretty tight game, you know, and the Astros, and like you said, ended up losing. But, I mean, this is a fun game. And what's interesting to me is the crowd size. Now, um, I know it's on a Monday, but last year, you know, the Astros might want to go back to having one of the games at Consolation Field because I think the Sugarland fans really enjoy that. That place was packed whenever the Astros came at came to Consolation Field. I have no idea unless there was a scheduling conflict or the fields weren't ready. But next year, guys, y'all need to return one of those games to Consolation Field because those people out there in Sugarland they deserve it. There's we've met a lot of their hardcore fans. I actually saw I was sitting next to a guy that we that I met. And I don't know if you were with me, but I met him last year at one of the games and we were talking to him and his family's like, hey, I know you. You told us about your podcast, gave us one of your cards. And I think, Eric, you may have been with me because that's when we still had the business cards going. But he but he remembered that. And um, it was fun watching these guys go out there and compete. Um, Kennedy Corona got robbed by Justin Dearden. Justin Dearden showed up and got a hit. Um Rhett Kuba yesterday was throwing some nasty stuff, dude, on the he mound. He wasn't even allowed in the ballpark. Did you hear about that? He didn't have the proper credentials, and so they didn't allow Yeah, him yeah, to yeah, that was, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Chandler Rome had to tell the people, hey, uh, he's actually starting today. And they're like, well, he's still got to have real credentials. Look, we know all too well about that. I mean, look, that's a, that's a security thing, but that's actually kind of funny in it. It kind of shows, like, look, they're all professionals. Okay. They're all professional baseball players. They're just one guy's at a different part of his journey. And so I really like dude, that JC Cray home run tonight looked a lot like what, what, um, Cray has done 
you know, Carlos out of the strike zone. It was up over the strike zone and he just powered it to the Crawford boxes. So good for the guys that did good. And I'll talk a little bit later about Quincy Hamilton. He had quite a game. Yes. And uh, I like the way that Alex Bregman is swinging confidence. He looks like he's ready to take on free agency and he's looking for that big bucks. And uh, Reagan, uh, uh, Bregman was on Sports Talk 790 today, and they kept on throwing her hints like, don't you want to sing Houston? Don't you love the Tex-Mex around here and everything? I think uh, she, he, she was on Adam and Adam's show. So uh, that was a pretty cool experience to kind of hear uh, her talk about um, not only the uh, salsa, but just um, what it's like uh, kind of being uh, married to Alex Bregman and everything that she sees uh, like he's more de- he's more determined than I think we even know. And his determination drives her to go out there and create more businesses and get get out there more. So uh, if you haven't had a chance, go listen to that. That was a good interview by Reagan uh, Bregman there. So uh, I know that uh, this is the future versus the current Astros. And I know that I think J.P. France actually buzzed. Jose Altuve today and knock yeah, him down. Uh, we, everybody had flashbacks. No, no, let's not do this not again. again. Not again. Not again. <laughs> so it, it's kind of the last game of exhibition season. I know it's in front of your hometown fans, but it kind of makes you ask, should you go ahead and have your starters in for that long? But I think it's for the fans, and I think they had fun to play well, against – the little kids, so to speak. Well, I think too where they where they sit in the rotation. I think them going long, they're just saying, "Okay, this is basically technically your first start of the season." Right. I would rather them get tuned up tonight than get tuned up their 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 first start be be the longest. And the goal for JP France tonight was to get to a certain pitch count, and once he got to that pitch count, then he would in fact say that he would be ready to go. And tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, he had a total. He had a total of sixty-seven pitches. I think they were hoping to get to about eighty-five, but that didn't happen. And you know, he gave up quite a bit tonight. Um, it seemed like, but you know, I like what I saw out of out of the Astros pitchers. What was great about Ronel Blanco is after that leadoff home run to Quincy Hamilton, he settled down. Ten strikeouts. I mean, Ronel Blanco is good. Now here is the test for 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 Ronel Blanco. Reno Blanco's test is not in spring ball, is not in the lead home league, it is not in spring training. Reno Blanco's test is what happens when the middle of the season comes. Does he continue? Is he stronger this year to withstand the innings that they give him? And if he is, and if he can perform like he does at the beginning of the season, then Reno Blanco could have a contribution to this team, much like J.P. France did last year. Right. And it's all about building a pitch count for J.P. France. It doesn't matter what he's done, uh, but from where he came from to where he is, considering where uh, Justin Verlander was, I think J.P. France has uh, done wonders. So for him to be where he is uh, being stretched out, I think it's great. So I think the Astros, I still think that they will have to go to a six man rotation at some point. I don't know if Brandon Belak will be the six starter because he's not stretched out as much as the Astros would like him to be. I think he's a two to three inning guy. He is a long yeah. reliever. Yeah, he's a long but reliever. Like Brandon and I were talking about yesterday, they may go to six man rotation once Justin Verlander returns. But um, uh, I just don't know. Maybe Spencer Eric Getty gets a start. Maybe you call somebody else up to get a start uh, in April just to kind of help alleviate some of the innings because you don't want to push these guys too much, especially with J.P. France and uh, you, Hunter Brown. Oh, my gosh, this guy has looked like a different pitcher uh, so far this year. So I think the Astros pitching, once healthy, could be one of the best pitching in baseball. So uh, we'll go ahead and talk a little bit what, about what Justin Verlander did, what's his next steps in a second. Uh, we already talked about uh, Bregman, but – uh, Jordan Montgomery, no mas Jordan Montgomery. He's That's not an okay. option. We'll talk about uh, where he landed uh, in a second. All right, this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Look, I had a blast with Prize Picks this last weekend when it comes to especially the tournament. And you got the Elite Eight, you got the Sweet the Sweet Sixteen, the Elite Eight coming up, and 
it was fun. Um, I had a blast with the use a code locked on MLB for your first deposit match of up to $100. That's right. You can win 100 times your money on America's number one fantasy sports app. Turn $10 into $1,000 NBA, NHL, college basketball. If you want to play alongside prize picks, favorite players like H Town Wheelhouse. Okay, I threw that in there. Meek Mill, Sugar Shane O'Malley. I mean, I think I'm gonna throw those guys, right? Um, you can find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the prize picks community each week. That's right. And here's the deal: if you have a player in a basketball game who who is in the first half but does not return the second half, and that player projection basically won't count against you and the rest of your entry. Um those those stay live okay so your picks stay that person being out doesn't penalize you have all kinds of things to look at you can highlight your winnings from prize picks and how fun and simple this experience would be here's the deal i need you to download the app today use the code locked on mlb for the first deposit match of 100 dollars. that's right locked on mlb is the code for the first match deposit up to 100 dollars, and make sure you use prize picks pick more pick less it's that easy Hey guys, thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Go ahead and check out Locked On Sports Day. It's the first 24 7 streaming t- platform out there on YouTube. It's got all the news you need to know. Uh, can you not get enough of Shohei Tani out there? Did he do it? What's going on? Uh, like, do you believe it or not? Uh, that's not the point. It, whatever you need to know, Locked On Sports Today 24 7. And guess what, guys? Brett just shared the best video I've ever seen. If you go to Amazon, uh, the free Amazon uh, TV channels on uh, the Fire Stick, you can go ahead and search uh, baseball and you can go and search Astros and you will see our podcast there. So you can go and watch our podcast, stream it live on Amazon Fire TV. So go and check out that video. I'll go and post it there. We'll go and post it on YouTube as well. But that was an awesome experience. Um, unmute your mic. <laughs> you, you don't have to say it, man. Everybody sees it. Come on, man, for our audio audience. So you have to translate this. You say Blanco Luce Guinayo. That means looks great, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't put Spanish up there and not translate it for us, Eric. You can't do that. I didn't say it earlier because I, I didn't like, that your girlfriend did. So well, I had to I had to look it up. Um, it, dude, what is up with this? You go with Nomas Montgomery. Okay, we're going with a little Spanglish tonight. I see. Yeah. Um, okay, I like it. And look, hey, I've got the salsa verde hat that was uh, created by Santi Goat. There, uh, send a shout out to my guy Santiago Casas. Uh, that dude it rocks. He is a great hat designer. He did that game six hat. Um, you know, Eric Jordan Montgomery, when I saw the tweet come across my, my watch, one of the alerts, I was like, please say he didn't go back to the Rangers. <laughs> he went to the diamondbacks, the team that he, now he didn't really pitch a shutout against them. He didn't pitch super great against them, but he was on the team that beat the diamondbacks. It's interesting that you defeat the team and then you're like, Hey, I'm going to go to you. And here is another case of an opt out deal. And I'm telling you right now, if I'm Bregman, I'm going to be like, look, Boris, we ain't doing this one year opt out bull crap. Like this is some BS, dude. This is this is hurting the market, Eric. This is hurting the market overall, just like in the NFL. Deshaun Watson signed all that guaranteed money, 230 million. And now everybody's going to the NFL saying, well, I want that money and I've never done anything. And now you got these guys going, well, I want that. I, I think they're screwing the market up. And I think Scott Boris is doing more harm than good right now with his clients because I'm sorry, point blank, Jordan Montgomery, 38 wins in seven seasons. He's too greedy. He hasn't proven to me that he can do it over a whole season. Yes, he was great in the playoffs last year. You can't deny that. Jeremy Pena was great in the playoffs in 2022. ALCS World Series MVP. What did he do this year? He didn't really help much. So he's working on the hitting parts. His glove's still there. But just because someone does great in the postseason, you know what I'm saying? Howie Kendrick hit that home run off of Will Will uh, Will Smith, uh, not Will uh, Will Harris. Will Smith, Will Harris. He was a World Series hero. But before that, he was just Howie Kendrick. You know what I'm saying? So right. Mont can do something for a whole season and validate. How much is he getting? Twenty five the first year. 
Yes, uh, let me go ahead and tell you the breakdown. So he gets 25 guaranteed for the first year for one year deal. So uh, he gets a vesting option. Uh, he gets 20 million with 10 starts in 2024. He gets an uh, extra 2.5 million with 18 starts in 2024. He gets an extra uh, 2.5 million with 23 starts. So basically if he gets 23 starts in 2024, he gets 25 million for 2025 as well. So his first marker is 10 starts. Mm -hmm. How many starts does Jacob DeGrom have to get this year? <laughs> I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, no, I'm sorry, man. These guys that are oft injured and they're getting all this flipping money, bro. Like I'm, I'm so glad that we didn't sign him. And I'm honestly glad we didn't sign snow because right. I, I think these deals are, are just crap. Right. So just imagine these guys, like, especially Jordan Montgomery, I think that he was expecting a lot more money, but both Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery, they both received about 50 million less in guaranteed money than Tyre Glass now did. So yeah. uh, this, this was like, it doesn't help to wait. It does not help. I think that a lot of free agents are looking at this and uh, they're, they've learned a lesson. Uh, yes, teams do get desperate, but at the same time, they're not going to go out. And I think that's what the Astros weren't willing to do. They weren't willing to go over uh, 30 million for uh, Blake Stell, and they weren't going to go over 20 million for Jordan Montgomery because Jordan Montgomery, outside of three seasons, he has just been a okay pitcher. To me, if they would have paid Jordan Montgomery 20 million, that would have been a vast overpay. That would have been I, like, I mean, we talk about the Montero payment being crazy, but I just, I just don't think Montgomery. look, Montgomery may go out and may prove me wrong. Montgomery may go out and have his best year. And you know what? Tip your hat to him if he does, but right. the track record is not there. And that's all I have to go off of. Yeah. So, uh, but the Astros do have Justin Verlander, and he did pitch a uh, live BP today, two simula simulated innings, about 32 pitches. He sat about 92, 94 miles per hour. He touched about 95 miles per hour on stadium radar gun in the first inning. So, uh, if this if session goes well, if he recovers well tomorrow. He will be starting the next step will be starting a minor league rehab. So it depends on we know the Space Cowboys will be starting their season pretty soon. Uh, the I think the Hooks will be starting a week uh, later than the Space Cowboys. So you're likely uh, if you're a um, if you're a Space uh, Cowboys fan, check to see when uh, Justin Merlander could be starting for your team. Yeah, no, you're 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 definitely going to see some JV starts. Yeah. In play. And one of the things he said he checked on today was he sat in between the first and the, in the second inning. And he said, what I was trying to see was how do I get basically re-upped? How do I get recharged? Because once you go and you sit down, even for six to eight minutes, your body calms down, but then you have to go back into start mode and you have to go, you have to basically turn. It's, it's like flipping a switch is kind of how I was thinking about it when he was describing it. And he said, that's one of the markers. And he said, I was able to check that box. He said, the next box I'm going to have to check is tomorrow. How do I feel? And then how do I recover from throwing? And, and, you know, you don't realize how technical and how insanely intricate pitching is these days. And until you listen to them talk about every little thing, you know, for you and I, or the common fan, oh, he's a pro. He gets paid $28 million. He should be out there. He should be able to pitch seven days a week. Nolan Ryan did it, you yeah. know, and, no, it, it's not. It's not like that. It's not that simple. And if you're protecting your assets, he's an older player. You've got to protect his health. And Justin Verlander will be out there when the time is right. And that'll be a fun thing for the Space Cowboys crowd to see a future first ballot Hall of Famer right there. Oh, speaking of future MLB uh, baseball player, did you realize that Ronel Blanco was actually at the hospital all day long today because his wife delivered a baby? And that's then, right. I was, he was yeah. the ballpark and was just like, hey, uh, let's go pitch. A ball that's game. what it was. See, I wondered because I knew that his wife was expecting and I wasn't sure if she had made it here because she had to get to Houston by a certain time, you know, because when you're pregnant, you can't fly after so many months. And I wasn't sure she was here. But uh, no wonder why a friend of mine who I was speaking with about him, 
she didn't answer me all day, and that explains it. He was pitching with that dad strength. They've, they, so they had their second kid today. Ronell, congratulations on the new baby. Look, man, I really want this guy to have a good year because this guy cares, and he worked so hard this offseason, and he has a camaraderie with this pitching staff that I absolutely love. All right, so I know it's just spring training. I know it's exhibition games, but right for you, is it time to panic? We'll discuss. Well, look, if you don't have tickets to the game, I don't want you to panic. If you haven't, if you didn't get in the lottery and you didn't get those face value tickets, look, I'm telling you, you can find tickets, but here's the deal. You don't have to plan. Just wait. Trust me. Wait till opening day. Use the code first pitch and you'll get $20 off your first per your, your purchase of $150 minimum purchase. I mean, you know, look, that's not a bad deal. Okay. Let me tell you what game time has. Game time has the ability for you to see the seats, where you're at, what you're buying. They have zone deals. They have flash deals. And it's last-minute tickets, easy to find. You buy them, you view them, the lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection, which they're not going to cancel opening day, job loss protection. God forbid that happens, but they have it there. All-in prices show you everything. There's no surprises when you go to check out, oh, my gosh, there's an extra $40 in my, you know, on my charge. No, that's not the deal. And let me tell you, if you go to a game and you happen to look at another site, after you have tickets and you find the same section, same row for a cheaper price, they will credit you 110% the difference. That's right. So I need you to listen to me, a Chum wheelhouse, download the game time app today, create an account, use a promo code locked on for $20 off your first purchase, minimum of $150 terms apply again, create, an account and redeem the code locked on L O C K E D O N for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Hey guys, thank you for making locked on Astros podcast. Your first listen every day, whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen. Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, go and check us out. But go and check out Locked On Sports Today. It's the first ever 24-7 streaming platform out there. It's got all the news to, uh, that you need to know, whether you want Shohei Tani news all day long. Uh, I'm sure that's what, all that they're talking about right now. Um, and the second, once Brett gets hooked up, uh, we'll go ahead. And uh, I know I talked to Brandon yesterday about this, but – I wanted to get his reaction before we go to Brian Abreu. What was your reaction to uh, Shohei Tani's uh, basically reading a statement? Um, I think I think someone's someone's lying. I think there's BS in the air, and I smell it. And it smells, you know, if there's a skunk, you can smell it miles away. Something's not right. You don't change your um, you don't change your statement unless somebody tells you to. You don't change your statement unless you prepared something and the club gave you something else to say. You don't change your statement if you're not somewhat a little bit guilty, Eric, if I'm being really honest. I am not going to assume that he's guilty, but I'm also not going to assume he's innocent because where there's smoke, there's fire. I want Otani to be innocent. I don't want Otani to, uh, Otani to be found guilty. But if he did bet even on a single pitch in baseball, they should without hesitation ban him for life. And because if they don't, they need to come out and publicly apologize to Pete Rose for dragging this man through the mud. And yes, he was bullheaded. And yes, he bet on baseball. And that was... But if he didn't bet on baseball and it wasn't him and it truly was theft, then you know what? He's a victim of circumstance and that sucks. So that's my opinion. I think it's a very high chance that he's guilty, but I also think there's a very high chance that baseball will kind of sweep this under the rug because if this was a Houston Astro, Eric, he would have already been crucified 20 times. He would have already been annihilated and kicked to the sun because we see how they treat our guys, even guys that are innocent. Yeah, I think that somebody asked him today, like, um, what evidence do you have that shows that you had no idea this was happening? And he said, I have turned all the evidence I need to turn into through the court. Good for him. Well, that's it. Yeah. A reporter's not, not going to get that answer out of you. What? 
That's a horrible question. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. even I'm not even I'm not media apparently to some people and and I know not to ask that's that's a stupid that's a dumb question. Can you can you can you produce the evidence right now, Shohei? Can you give me a picture, a timestamp? Like, who is this guy? Like, is he like he's like I'm with the FBI. <laughs> So I mean, I'm going to give that proof. I mean, if if uh, yeah, he, he had the password and yeah. he had everything, like he's like, hold on, he gets on a computer. He's like, hold on, let me get my email. Let, let me, me send this by ePay. Hold on, let me send this by ePay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> ePay, not IP. I know. Thank Brandon, you. I said the right yesterday, but okay. Yeah. So, so Brian Abreu, are you worried? Yes, I know Brandon is. He, he's been texting me all day. Dude, this sucks. Uh, he's going to be bad. And I know that he's had a bad spring training. Uh, what game? I think it's a suspension. No, I, I think it's a mental. I think it's oh, mental. Okay. I, 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 think he's, I think he's pissed about the two, two games. I, I think it's affecting him mentally. I mean, that to me is the first thing I go to. Well, would, if you look would, at what... Wouldn't you be pissed if you were still suspended yeah. over something you didn't do on purpose? I mean... Yeah, but uh, at the same time, you still got to do your job. And his job is to be part of this three-headed beast. And so far, I know it's spring True. training. They're just working on things. But in, what, uh, six games, he has, not including today, he has 1181 ERA. He has allowed seven earned runs. He has allowed six walks, which is uh, worst he's ever done in spring training. He does have seven strikeouts. He's allowing a 364 batting average. That's uh, his uh, MLB career in uh, spring training is 217. So the, everything, his whip is 263, 2.63. His career spring training whip is 1.38. Mm. So he's been off his spring training. That's not good. Yeah. Right, right. Right. That's, and then today, he didn't look good either. He had, what, two walks and he allowed – Two runs on two hits in one inning, no strikeouts. Can we fly Martin here for like pregame, just before the opening day, and just like tell him what he used to tell him or something? Can we can we do that? Uh, Brett, he's on a different team. Oh no! Oh Corey, oh, hey, no. oh, 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 Corey Lee. oh, oh Corey yeah, Lee. Corey. Lee, I was gonna tell you, yeah, Corey. Lee. <laughs> Max Stassi's gone, dude. Max he's Stassi, solid, right? he's hurt. Max Stassi. Will not be in a white sock. My, Max Sassy will get DFA'd before the end of the season. Mark, mark my words. Bookmark it. Max Sassy, I bet you, is out of Major League Baseball between this year and next year. I think he's gone. But good for you, Corey Lee. Um, but maybe some of the pressure of being a part of this three-headed monster is getting to him, too. I mean, look, these are professionals. They're not perfect, okay? The bottom line is this. Brian Abreu is expected to do a whole lot because he did a whole hell of a lot last season. He's one of the most reliable and dependable relievers and relievers go through these funks. I mean, we've seen Ryan Presley go through it. I mean, these guys are going to go through it. You just hope that when it comes to crunch time, if game three, because he won't be in game one or two game three, his head's cleared. And maybe he won't pitch on that game three. Maybe they give him another day. Maybe they just do a little bullpen session or something with him, bring him in the fourth game against the Yankees. But if he, who, who knows? I mean, watch, he can come in Saturday, strike out three batters in one inning, and then everybody's like, oh, see, Brandon and Eric were freaking out. I'm joking. But it is, I think, for a pitcher, a little bit more concerning than a hitter going 111. But then again, the argument is it's just spring training, isn't it? But then when someone does something good, oh, my God, he had an amazing spring. Well, you know, Deirdre made, had an amazing spring, and then he kind of fell off, you know. Um, so the bottom line is, you you said it, Eric, he has a job to do. And, um, you know, this is a new era of Astros baseball. Um, this is a new era of the Houston Astros with Joe Espada. And Joe Espada has got a lot of pressure on him. There's a lot of people that are saying, like, things on Twitter, if he doesn't go to the ALCS, he should – he should get fired. I'm like, that's ridiculous. So Joe spot has got a lot of pressure on him. Um, this whole team though, I think has been there, done that. And I think their experience is going to win over Dude, that top six. Have you seen it? That is a murderer's row. That is a formidable opponent. 
Our offense looks good. What if figures it out? What if Jake Dude. Myers Jake is Myers going to have a breakout year, baby? I'm telling you, my boy Jake the Rake, Jake from Rake Farms is going deep, baby. Let's go opening day. So hey, yeah. tomorrow we've we we got something exciting, and I I haven't. I mean, I've confirmed it. Um, old scrap iron, Phil Garner former Houston Astros manager and player will be on our show tomorrow night. So Phil Garner is going to join us. Astros legend. Uh, yeah. So another reason it's a new error for the lockdown Astros podcast is my mic died before the podcast. And so I have to buy a new one, unfortunately, but uh, I think that Ryan Abreu is going to be fine. I think uh, maybe oh, just fine. spring training. Uh, I just, if, if he's doing this during regular season, I think we're going to, uh, we'll have to be a little bit more worried about it, but I'm excited to see what this team can do, especially once it gets healthy. So, uh, Brett, anything else? No. Hey, look, um, I'm going to be there all day opening day. I know Eric's going to be there. I'm going to be around. Um, I've got a spot at 1230, probably at the club level with um, Southwest Louisiana out there with RP3 and the guys, and we'll be out there. I'll be, I will have some mics and we will be taking some content. Also right here, this is an actual link that you guys need to check out. I'm going to put it up on our page. Eric, thank you for reminding me. Um, This is what I want y'all to do. I want y'all, this is an actual link and this link takes you to a page that you actually give and we see how much I'm going to be giving out more money. You're going to see this total go up. We need to raise $4,000 in 65 days. Please, please, please. Let's get this done for these kids in, in the Dominican. They also have other ways to give, but this is our campaign that we're doing with them. So thank you all for tuning in to Lockdown Astros. He's Eric. No matter where he is, he's got his mic, well, or his computer, and we are ready for opening day. So let's go, Astros. Let's go. We'll see you tomorrow.